works. He goes, he is completely enthralled in the entire religion, wants to be a part of it, and completely quits drinking. He said that finding religion allowed him to forgive his captors, and once he forgave his captors, all of his nightmares went away. Really? Yeah. I think that's a pretty fucking awesome uh, way that the brain works. Yeah? You know, like, I mean... I'm not a religious person by any means, but whatever it takes to get you to a place of peace, whether that's religion or meditation right. or therapy or what have you, I think it's so interesting that things like nightmare is a very physical event is mm -hmm. caused by mental strife that you have not yet worked out. And I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So after getting super involved... He ends up following Billy Graham around and creating this entire career out of being an evangelistic, touring, speaker-type person. He goes to all these retreats, telling his story. Yeah, he's got quite a story. No shit. He even goes and visits all the guards from the prison camps that are now in prison in Japan. Wow. And tells them to their face that he's forgiven them, except for one who was like a giant asshole that refused to see him. <laughs> But not you. No, he wanted to forgive him, but the guy wouldn't see him. Oh, yeah. It'd be pretty fucking hard looking into the face of the person that you beat uh -huh. continuously for over a year. Yeah. Well, in 1998, at the age of 81, he travels back to Japan again, but this time it was to carry the torch at the Nagano Olympic Winter Games. Okay. He ended up writing two memoirs, both of them called Devil at My Heels, one in 1956 and one in 2003. And I don't know why that makes me laugh. Like, he wrote two separate memoirs, named them the same thing. <laughs> why? <laughs> why did we do that? Uh. And then, like I said, in 2010, Unbroken, a World War II story of survival, resilience, and redemption. Why are you breathing in like that? Anyway? Yeah, I remember. Okay, I, I didn't see that movie, but I remember exactly the movie you're talking well, about. Well, that's the book. Oh, yeah. yeah. But well, you the, said Angelina Jolie. Yeah, well, her. that happened in 2010. Laura Hillenbrand wrote that book. But in 2014, that's when they made that book into a movie, uh -huh. Unbroken. And in July of 2014, Louis Zamperini died of pneumonia at age 97. Mm. That fucking guy endured more. I mean... You can just blame a lot of shit on having immigrant parents and not knowing the language and being like having the shit kicked out of you in school mm -hmm. and then set the trajectory of your life of almost like feeling sorry for yourself because your childhood was rough. Right. Instead, he redirected his energy to running, goes to the fucking Olympics, meets Hitler, gets shot at, joins the Air Force, saves people's lives. Uh-huh. Gets lost at sea, becomes a POW, then becomes a evangelistic tort. Like, how many <laughs> fucking lives did this man lead? Yeah. And it's still, from everything that I read, he had such a good attitude towards everything. That's great. And I think that that's what probably kept him alive through all of his bullshit, kept him going through his childhood and everything, was just making something good out of something really shitty yeah anyways i know it's not very true crime -y, but i love his story yeah no that's an incredible story okay so my topic is on project mk ultra oh you went hard so you've heard of this haven't we all <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but it's one of those that i get screwed up with the Philadelphia experiment, the paperclip thing. Operation paperclip. Yeah, all those conspiracy but not uh -huh, type stories shit. Yeah. And, yeah. So I always love hearing about it. So MK Ultra was a program ran by the CIA that started in 1953 and it ran until 1973. It used to be called Project Bluebird and then Project Artichoke. Those make them very much less ominous. Yeah. <laughs> so the purpose of MK Ultra was to basically find a better way to interrogate people. And they wanted to do like brainwashing, psychological torture, hypnosis, and drugs, mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. They wanted to find like a truth serum. They wanted, you know, that would make, they capture a secret agent. Right. And they could interrogate him and give him drugs and get all the answers. It feels pretty much like threat of death is 
right there at the best way to get answers from someone. No, a lot of these like agents and stuff, they're just they won't prepared give up. to die. Yeah, yeah, they won't. I gotcha. I got cyanide tooth pills that they'll crush and kill themselves with. I need that, but like for Xanax. <laughs> because sometimes, man, I'll be like in line at Kroger trying to check out and I get a flush of a mini panic attack and I need to crunch your tooth. Yep. That's exactly what I need. <laughs> One of the drugs that they tested extensively with was LSD. They used all the drugs. They did barbiturates and amphetamines and cannabis and mushrooms and man, MK Ultra, they basically picked up where the World War II era Nazi and Japanese camps left off. Okay. With testing chemicals and drugs and all that stuff. Like Unit 731 that I talked about back in episode seven. Uh-huh. Which I remember every part about. They did the Japanese it was a Japanese camp that had done tests, injected viruses and stuff into people. Ugh. And cut off arms and oh, yeah. sewed them onto other parts and Yeah, I do remember that. But they were doing a lot of drug testing and stuff as well. So they just kind of picked up. Plus, they had just had all these Nazi doctors and stuff that came over from oh, Operation Paperclip. Yeah. Brought them over. So they were learning directly from these people that were conducting these experiments. God, what a fucking terrible work environment. Yeah. Oh, it gets better. In 1996, some documents were declassified, and they talked about how North Korea had experimented on 900 American POWs. Oh my gosh. And then after they ran their tests and experiments on them, they executed them, killed them. Now, this project, MKUltra, it was ran by a guy named Sidney Gottlieb. Have you heard that name? Maybe. You've heard it before. Okay. And it's mainly because it's tied to this. Well, why would you ask me if you knew I had heard it before? I don't know, I was trying to make you sound like you were knowledgeable about these. Well, that is an impossible task. Because Gottlieb is a name that po- that comes up in other conspiracies you. and stuff. The CIA was worried that enemy countries were using mind control techniques and they wanted to come up with their own. Mm-hmm. There's a document that talks about how they were trying to study drugs and materials that could make people act crazy in public so they could be discredited. Oh. Uh-huh. They also wanted to cause diseases that could be reversed. For what? So think of like a a spy movie. Okay. And all these situations, they might be able to get someone under their control because they've made them sick and then now they can cure them. Oh, okay. So these are all ways to use people and stuff. I thought that was more like a, gotcha, psych. (laughs) They also wanted to experiment and try to make hypnosis easier. Mm, to do they wanted to cause amnesia they wanted to cause paralysis of the legs oh my god yeah all sorts of bad stuff but uh, it's very specific what they were trying to test for huh okay so like i said before the cia tested with lsd a lot they bought the entire supply of lsd from the swiss pharmaceutical company that discovered it they just bought all of it up lsd came about because one guy accidentally ingested it or Mm -hmm. was absorbed through his skin in 1943 and then he like tripped i've never done lsd have you uh -uh. huh i wonder what it's like like comparable to mushrooms you know what i mean yeah i think it's more intense than mushrooms yeah but it's basically a chemical that is found in a type of fungus that infects grain so it kind of occurs naturally oh i did not know that at all Uh -uh. i thought it was completely man-made yeah I didn't know either. But and that's how this guy accidentally ingested it. We're going to have to get us some grain. <laughs> it's all molding and shit. Let's see if we can get something going. The scientists would give LSD to psychiatric patients. Oh, that doesn't feel nice. Prisoners and drug addicts. They would... That, okay. Well, but I, I know. Psychiatric patients, they're already struggling as is. Yeah, but they can't yeah. fight back or anything. It's fucked up. But like the drug addicts, they would bribe them with like heroin addicts with more heroin mm-hmm. if they would take LSD so they could study them. Hmm. One psychiatric patient was given LSD for 174 days straight. Oh my God. Yeah. And a lot of the time, people didn't even know that they were being given LSD, that they were even being tested on. 
that would be the weirdest sensation. Just mm-hmm. feeling like you're losing your mind. Uh-huh. And you don't know what's real anymore. Well, like they could just drop it in your water. Yep. And there you go. And the next thing you know, you're melting into the couch. God. The CIA used some of their safe houses that they had had and turned them into brothels. Uh-huh. And this was called Operation Midnight Climax. Oh, God. They would go get sex so workers. Cringy. Well, I know. <laughs> they would go get sex workers, have them pick up dudes, take them... To these safe houses mm-hmm. and slip them LSD okay, and see if they could get them talking and just seeing how they would interact and stuff. And somebody would be watching through a one-way mirror. Creepy. Something else that they would do, they would take a person, hook up a barbiturate in an IV in one arm mm-hmm. and amphetamine in the other. And they would let the barbiturate flow. And then as soon as that person was like unconscious... They would stop the flow of that and then turn on the amphetamine. Oh, my God. And they would, like, wake up freaking (laughs) out and talking and saying all sorts of incoherent shit. And they thought that if you could question people while they were in this mindset of Uh waking up in that state, they wouldn't be able to lie and they could get truth out of people that way. We just called that candy flipping back in the day. (laughs) Well, a lot of these people ended up dying. Oh, shit. So they quit doing that. The guy in charge, Sidney Gottlieb, mm-hmm. he wanted to use drugs not just for interrogations, but out in the real world for his secret agents and stuff. To slip to people? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At first, a couple agents would take LSD, sit at a table across from each other, and take notes as time went on, just what they were experiencing. And they both were on LSD? Yeah. I would love to read those notes. (laughs) That'd be great. Well, then it escalated to people being drugged around the office randomly. Oh, my God. The CIA office. Fuck. (laughs) One guy had his coffee drugged, and he ended up running outside and claiming that monsters were in every car that drove past him. Yeah, I've been there, bud. So they're just in a normal work office environment. Yes. And people are running around slipping each other LSD. Yeah. Now, is there any research purposes to this? Or is it now just some like weird fucking game that they're all playing together? No, it's still research. And I imagine it's the same person administering the doses every time. Mm. It's not like we're both together, work together, and then we're just like, hey, I'm going to... I don't know. It's like, if it's one guy, surely people would have caught on. Like, no, no, no. covering your hand over your drink when Bob walks near. Well, and then a lot of these agents were aware. That it could happen at any time? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. And then that. It, it would happen. And they were, they, some of them didn't like it, but it was part of the job. <laughs> it was part of the testing process for the LSD. Absolutely not. Yeah. Can you imagine showing up like on a Monday and you're just filing paperwork and you end up having like a four hour conversation with your fucking stapler or something? <laughs> you're like, fuck, they got me again. <laughs> Are they always picking on me? <laughs> so the project also funded many other organizations that would do tests on people hmm. for them. One doctor named Donald Cameron treated people in Montreal, Canada at McGill University, which had a hospital there. Mm -hmm. But he would live in New York and then travel across the border to Montreal so he could test on people not on U.S. soil. Because they thought there was like a... Well, because you can't... Independent factor? Oh. Yeah. That was the way of getting around of testing... U.S. citizens? Yeah. Of not testing U.S. citizens? Right. I gotcha. Sorry, Canadians. That's fucked up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Now, this might be a stupid question, but is all of this factual? Like, did all of these things oh, come yeah. out? Okay, so this is not conspiracy theory by any means. No. All of this is documented. Yes. Yeah, there was a huge uh, Senate hearing about the documents involving MK Ultra Wow. And what they said. Yeah, th- and all this information came from that. Can you, sorry, this is also off topic, but can you imagine with the the waves we've made in technology, the kind of shit that we're doing now? Because they were just playing around with LSD back then. Uh-huh. Like, what is happening now? What yeah, is, what are they doing now? Yeah, now, what is today's MKUltra? they past that. Yeah. Yeah. 
now it's like, can we suck your soul out and put it in Siri type shit? <laughs> <laughs>